Hey guys, today we are going to be setting up a streaming server. If you've done any research, there's a ton of streaming servers online like Restream, um, like Video Yard or something like that. Um, all kinds of them. Resi, I think, is another Restreamer. I don't know. Um, but there's a ton of Restream services online that basically let you stream from something like OBS uh, and broadcast to YouTube, Facebook, and multiple platforms all at once coming from one single like OBS instance one single hardware encoder, um, that kind of thing. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a free version. Now it's free if you want to host it yourself. Obviously if you want to host it in the cloud, um, you're going to have to pay for that. Currently in this video I'm going to be using Phoenix Naps Bare Metal Cloud for this instance. Um, I think it's got something crazy, yeah, 128 gigs of RAM, 16 cores. Um, it's completely overpowered for what I need here, but um, I just wanted to get something fast enough with a 20 gig internet connection that would make this tutorial shoot a lot quicker. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Before we begin, I did want to mention I have online documentation available for this video. Um, every single command I'm going to run is pretty much written out on this website, so um, if you're curious, if you want to just copy and paste the commands, or if you want to learn more about a specific command and what it does, it's all available on the website typed out in a nice format. So. Be sure to check that out, it's linked in the description below. First of all, we're going to want to update our VM, sudo apt update dash y, and and sudo apt upgrade dash y. This is going to completely update the VM and make sure it's um, ready to go and install the latest versions of different packages. Um, now, if you're hosting this yourself, you're going to also want to keep it up to date. You're going to want to run this command. Um, every few months just to make sure everything stays up to date and secure. So if you see this message, you can click tab and click OK. And that will basically just restart those services that needs restarted. And there we go, we are done. Okay, so now we're going to go through, we're going to install some packages. So basically, if you want to stream to like Facebook, you're going to need Stunnel 4. Um, if you want to stream to Instagram, you're going to need FFmpeg. If you want to stream to YouTube or anything, you don't need anything else. You can just use anything built in. And if you want to restream to like another RTMP source, That'll be covered within these two packages up here, but like I said, if you need to stream to like something like Instagram or Facebook, those require different like formats of streams and stuff, so these tools right here help you reformat it. And just to keep in mind, those might take extra CPU performance from your VM, so um, if you're doing something like this, like if you're streaming to Facebook or Instagram, you might want a higher spec'd out VM for running this. Okay, so now we're gonna install Nginx and the Nginx mod for RTMP, so we're gonna say sudo apt install nginx and lib nginx mod rtmp i'm gonna say dash y and again we're gonna click ok and we're done this is why a 20 gig internet connection is fantastic all right so next i'm not going to install these because i don't have instagram or facebook that i can stream to so we're going to continue on but just keep in mind if you do need to stream to those um the written documentation is available online for that so let's continue going on. Um, so a few things we're going to see here coming up. I'm just going to show you. We have a server, we have an application, and we have these push commands. So these push commands that you see here, that's what streams to YouTube. So as you can see, we're pushing to the RTMP URL that YouTube gives you. And actually, if you go to start a YouTube stream, it'll give you this command that you can run, not the push part. It'll just give you the RTMP URL. So you can actually insert that into Nginx before you stream and fill it in with your stream key and all that kind of stuff. So Let's copy this. We're going to open up sudo nano-etc-nginx and it's nginx.conf. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and paste this in here. So I'm going to go from the top down and just do an overview. So this is RTMP. Any server you run that is RTMP on this VM, you're just going to put inside of this RTMP section, as you can see. This whole area is available for you to put a server in. Um, and then these servers, basically what they do is they are listeners for your different RTMP streams. So you could technically have one VM and have like 50 streams going at once and have them all on different ports. Or you could have one server going and you could all listen on the same port and have different applications. So you could say like something like slash live, you could also say slash live one, etc. So you can make it so that way you have more streams that you can run on a single VM. There's not much advantage or anything to having different servers necessarily. The application should work just fine. So next is the applications. These applications basically are the URL that you're going to use to stream. So it's going to be like, I'm going to show you an example later on of what the URL looks like, but 
it's gonna be slash live for this one. That's pretty much what you need to know. And within these applications, you can have multiple push locations as well. So I could stream about 50 YouTube streams from here if I wanted to, I'm not sure why I would, but I could stream to YouTube 50 times, Facebook 20 times. I gotta list them all in this area between these brackets. Next we have live on. Um, technically you could like lock out your stream. When you're not using, you could actually turn this, you could say live off. That way it's not gonna publicly stream, but usually I just leave them on because I have them um, IP whitelisted usually. So it's not like someone else in the world can just stream to this unless they have my public IP address. Um, record off. Now I'm gonna show you later on as well, but um, there is an option to record the stream. And I actually use this on some of my streams. It's really nice because it can automatically record and offload to my server, which is a very nice feature to have. Um, I don't have to remember to click record on OBS or whatever. Um, it just does it automatically. Now the one downside to this is that if you have any internet outages or anything and you're streaming to a public um, VM, then your stream recording is going to also cut out. So you have to consider that because it might be a better solution to record locally on your PC that you're streaming from. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the IP whitelisting. Basically what you can do is by default, if you don't have these options there, it'll let you stream from anywhere in the world to your VM on this port, on this application but I would highly recommend you say allow publish and then your public IP here. It is probably a much better idea because that way you're not just letting anywhere in the world stream to this. If, if they were to find the URL and the port and all that kind of stuff, um, they can't stream. So I would just put your IP here. Um, if you don't know your IP address, you can say um, curl ifconfig.me. You can run this in your command prompt terminal and it will tell you your public IP address. Okay, so next we have the push, which I kind of mentioned previously, but you're gonna make a new push row every time you want to stream to something. So if I wanted to stream to another YouTube feed, I would just add this below. And like I said, I can add as many as I want, as long as they have different stream keys. It doesn't make any sense to stream to the same stream key over and over again. So as long as they have different stream keys, you can stream to as many YouTube channels as you technically want to. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the YouTube side of things. Um, I'm not going to do a stream in this video, um, I'm just testing today just to show you, but you're going to want to go to your YouTube studio and click live and click go live and you're going to use a streaming software and I like to schedule these streams. It doesn't necessarily matter like when you schedule them for, I mean I would schedule them for the time of your event, but if it's a case where you just want to stream whenever you want, then once you have um, the stream key set up, you should be able to just stream. So here's the video, whatever, I'm just going to say test stream test stream and I'm gonna make this private um, that's all fine I don't really care it's fine live chat whatever um, we're gonna say private and we're gonna scroll down click done so once this is created now we can go into the stream just like we are here and as you can see it actually gives you these RTMP URLs that you can use so you can actually copy this into nginx if you wanted to um, paste it into your file and fill that in. So as you can see, we have our stream keys here. You can do different stream keys for different event names, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna grab the stream key here. I'm gonna click copy, and I'm gonna go over here and delete the lines that says stream key. I'm gonna paste this in there. Next, we're gonna remove the public IP, and I'm just gonna comment these lines out for now because I'm not going to set this up and leave it set up permanently. Uh, this is literally just for like a five minute test and the stream is private. So we're gonna do control X on the keyboard, Y and enter. And now we're going to say sudo system ctl restart nginx. So that's how you kind of reload your changes. Um, I do want to be clear though, every time you do this, your stream will cut out. So if you're streaming and you do this command, your stream will cut out as it's reloading the settings. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can also say sudo service nginx reload, and that's kind of like a soft reload. Um, it just reloads the settings, not the active connections. But if you're trying to stream to a different location, you're most likely wanting to reroute that stream anyway, which you're gonna have to use the restart command for. Um, or you can just reload these changes like this and have the stream offline and start streaming once the changes have been made and reloaded. Okay, so we have our other settings here. I don't really, none of these necessarily apply to the streaming solution. I'm just trying to highlight the ease of use for this stream setup. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna open up OBS in a new um, device and I'm going to show you what this looks like to set up a stream. Okay, so we're gonna to go to settings, stream, and here's where the RTMP URL is going to go. So in my case, I'm gonna fill it in for what I just configured. Um, basically, we're gonna close out of that. Yep, we're gonna say stream-primary.phoenixnap-bmc.beamnetworks.cloud slash live. 
Okay, so I just filled in those settings there. As you can see, we are streaming. I entered in the server URL. Now the default port is 1935. So if you're going to be using the default config that I put online on port 1935, you don't need to specify the port. Uh, if you did change the port though, you are going to need to change and specify the port by using a colon and saying your port. So 1936 you could do, um, but like I said, I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, our stream key, I just say it's live. Um, I don't think the stream keys do anything at all actually. So you really don't have to fill that in. I think you might have to fill it in, but I don't think they affect like what you're actually doing because we're streaming to a custom server. So next we're gonna click okay and we can start streaming. And as you can see, our connection is really good there at the bottom. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna switch back to the other computer and I'm going to check on our YouTube settings here to see if it is working. So as you can see, we are back here on the other computer and we are receiving the stream on YouTube, which is fantastic. So I don't know why it says it's out of one hour. Um, maybe my account is limited to a in one hour stream or something, or I scheduled it for an hour. That could also be the case. I don't know. I think it says one hour because I did a private stream. Uh, you might not be able to stream like forever if it's a private stream, but um, that is basically the setup. And that is how to set up a streaming server using Nginx. So like I said earlier, there's so much more information you can find on the documentation, the written documentation is available on my website. Feel free to um, reach out. You can log in, make an account, or, or you can find me on my website and reach out, fill the form out on there, and we can get in touch if you need assistance with setting this up. Um, but other than that, that is all I have today. So thank you for watching this video. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.